I'm going to go ahead and take this dual cassette deck apart here from the Fisher Studio Standard uh, <clears throat> component system that I bought. While I'm waiting for parts on the amplifier to arrive, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart and see uh, what exactly is going on with this thing. Um, I suspect that there's probably a lot of gunk in this thing only because um, when I s assembled the uh, system, uh, when I set it down on top of one of the other components, a lot of dust was sitting on top of the component, a lot of dirt uh, was sitting there. So I think it probably came out of this guy at some point, somewhere, in some hole somewhere. Um, the buttons don't really push in on this thing and the uh, input sliders don't move at all buttons work but uh, tapes eject tape doors I should say open up and eject there but uh, this one I uh, got to push in when I was testing it and uh, the motor just kept running and running and running and I could never get it to stop even pushing the stop and all that stuff it just wouldn't stop so right now if I power this thing back up it's just gonna sit there spinning and spinning and spinning so uh, I'm gonna take this thing apart and see if it's salvageable if it's worth fixing or anything like that it's kind of a neat looking deck but um, I've got some better ones so I don't know we'll find out here I'm gonna go ahead and pop the uh, case screws off there and have a look see inside shall we well, I must say I'm quite surprised it's not anywhere near as dirty as I thought it was. Although you can see some of the dust right there that fell out of the receiver. I can see exactly where it came from now. But uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Let's have a look-see at these belts here. Well, the belt's there. Is it actually still one piece or is it broken here? I see the belts turning the gears there. Ever so slightly. Hmm. I'm kind of surprised to see the belts are still intact on this thing. I would have figured that they'd have been long since rotted out by now. Hmm, that one feels that one feels pretty good. wonder if this is a combination uh, counter and sensor on this thing to uh, detect if the cassette deck is actually spinning or not to tell whether or not it's got a tape jam or not. <clears throat> got a heck of a heck of a record arm right here. This is the record side of the uh, unit here. Goes over to the switch right here to tell it to uh, kick into recording mode and it actually looks pretty good in here frankly I was quite surprised hey you what there's a lot of components in this thing a lot more than I was expecting to see but then again this dates back to about 1986 so yeah I wouldn't be terribly shocked by that I guess but uh, yeah, I can see it moving those gears there a little bit too Well, maybe all we've got is just some gummed up controls down there in the tape deck itself. Maybe all I need to do is hit it with a little bit of uh, electrical cleaner there to free those controls up and maybe she'll just start working here. Maybe lube it up there, maybe that's all she needs. Uh, we do have a couple lights up here just like we did on the amplifier and it looks like that one might be burned out. That one looks like it might be burned out too. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't think I saw this light up. I think it was just the uh, um, level indicators that lit up on that. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and shoot this thing with some cleaner here. And we'll find out what we got at that point. Okay, so I got the tape mechanism unstuck here, unjammed, whatever you want to call it. This uh, little lock right here uh, pushes in when there's a tape in there so it's a little it's a little safety lock a sensor whatever you want to call it 
uh, to allow you to push the play button. And then the way this works is that the motor spins the uh, pulley down here if I can keep my belt on there. And as it turns, the entire mechanism comes up and engages the gears, capstan drive, and there you go, it starts spinning. And when you hit the stop button, the motor's still spinning, it undoes it. So that mechanism's working now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, i got to figure out if I can power this up because this requires a 16 volt AC which is being fed off the amplifier and since I've got the amplifier in pieces right now uh, I'm going to have to see if I can find a way to power that up. I don't know if I have any AC power sources or not but we'll take a look around here and see what I can find because I'd really like to see this thing work. While the restoration of the Fisher tape deck is nearly complete, I just need to put the cover back on and we should be done with this. Uh, one little mishap that did happen, unfortunately, was I broke the rewind button right here. I did try to epoxy it back together and it lasted for about 15 or 20 pushes and then it finally broke again. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it because I really don't feel like pulling this faceplate apart again in order to glue it back on there and just to have it go ahead and break again. So maybe one day I'll find another button for it, but until then I'm just gonna leave it. Having a rewind feature disabled on the record deck is not necessarily something I'd really want, but it's just something I have to live with. So I'll take a quick look at the insides of this thing here. Um, I did go ahead and replace the bulbs right there with some LED bulbs. And I also put a uh, 270 ohm resistor there these uh, LEDs the circuit board anyway is wired in series uh, to the power supply coming out of the uh, board down here so uh, it was easy just to go ahead and put a resistor across there and then wire these LEDs up into series as well uh, I want to talk a little bit about the build quality of this tape deck it's definitely nothing terribly fancy although there's definitely a lot more going on inside of here than uh, some newer tape decks were doing back in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, a Sony single well deck comes to mind that had absolutely nothing in here but a transformer back here and a little board for your inputs and outputs as well as everything being up here in the control panel. But for a cheap tape deck, and I will say this isn't anything terribly fancy, I don't even know if the auto stop, if this thing even has auto stop. It doesn't seem to work if it does on either deck, <clears throat> although it claims to have sequential play, which normally sequential play, from what I've seen on another deck that I have, a JVC deck, where one deck, if you have a tape in both decks, when one tape reaches the stop point, it starts to auto-reverse, or yeah, it automatically reverses the tape, rewinds the tape, and then the second tape goes ahead and starts to play while that one is busy rewinding. This, I don't see how that can do that when the auto stop doesn't work on this thing. Um, also, the playback deck uh, does not have a counter on it. The counter over here uh, is only for the record deck, so that's definitely something that they cheapened out on. I got all the controls freed up there. Just needed a little bit of cleaning under the sink and a little bit of deoxidant in there to go ahead and give it a little bit of lubrication. Um, Insides of this are definitely about typically average. You do have a true erasure head and then a playback recording head and your typical cap stand roller and all your take up reels here and things like that. So it's it's basically the same thing. This side has a dummy erase head over here. And the only thing I can figure that they did that for, and there's a lot of tape players that did this, a lot of manufacturers that did this anyway. I, I guess it must help to straighten out and align the tape before it gets to the recording head. That's the only thing, or to the, excuse me, the playback head. Uh, that's the only thing I can really think of as to why you would put a dummy recording head in there. Um, but the door is open and closed just fine. There is a, a whiff of cheapness with the buttons, I will say that. Um, although they, this side, the buttons work perfectly fine on. 
This side, they're still, well, they work better than they did, that's for sure. But, uh, it's kind of a mishmash between good, qual com uh, good components and cheapness. Um, the decks are mostly gear driven. There's a couple belts that turn everything in there. The motors surprisingly have a brass pulley on there on both motors. And so, you know, I would expect a cheaper deck to have a plastic uh, pulley on the motors, but it doesn't. Um, surprisingly, the um, speed of the motors was actually pretty much right on. I just had to do just a tiny little bit of tweaking on them. And it was just about right where it was. I didn't have to adjust the heads at all. They're right where they should be. And it sounds absolutely fantastic. This is one of these things that really surprises me because it sounds so good yet the build quality is kind of in between being fairly chintzy and fairly pretty good so I recorded this tape on this deck I'm gonna go ahead and cue it up here a little bit and I'll go ahead and play it And that's another nice thing you can do. You can do the push the fast forward button there while you're playing. Play quality is actually really good. So is the recording quality. It really surprised me. This is just a normal bias Memorex tape, nothing special. And it surprised me how incredibly good the recording was on it. So that'll conclude this repair. Just gotta get the cover back on. It's going to look quite nice with that amplifier.